Oh, it's Rick Taylor. What it do, what it do, it's your boy Cuckoo Cow sitting here chilling with Rap Draft, boy. We in the building, baby, fire. Yo, 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 what's going on, man? It's your boy Rick Taylor from Rick Taylor Entertainment. Back with another episode of the Rap Draft, you know what I'm saying? And I'm sitting down here with a legend, man, a, a special person, man, a legend in the city, a legend in the game, man. My boy, Cuckoo Kyle, what's going on with you, What man? it do, what it do, what it do? Chill, man. Thank you for coming on the show, man. Um, it's a pleasure, it's a pleasure. Oh, uh, yeah, man, and welcome, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Um, It's an honor to have you here on the show, bro, like... I grew up. To, I grew up watching you as a child. You know what I'm saying. Listening to your music and stuff like that, and um, just seeing how you was putting on for the city and stuff like that. It was beautiful, bro. And to have you sitting down with me right now is just man, that's dope, dog. It's love, <clears throat> man. Number yeah. love, number love. Yeah. Got to give back. Got to give back. So. Now, here on the Rap Drive, we like to let, you know, the fans know more about you and who you is. Like, it's a new generation. They probably right. don't know you. Then it's our generation. We grew right. up and we grew up listening to you. So I want to kick it off with, man, like, where was you born and raised? I was born, actually, in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Uh, I was an Army brat, man. I don't know if it, I could plug real fast. I got a documentary called The Rise and Fall of Cuckoo Cow. It's on Tubi. But, uh, yeah, I was born in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I, uh, my father was in the service in the Army. So I, we, we, like, moved every three years from there I moved to El Paso Texas from there to Baumholder Germany from Baumholder Germany to Richmond Virginia then my daddy retired here in Milwaukee Wisconsin when I was 12 years old oh man that's what's up man you moved around a lot man yeah. let me ask you like what was your childhood and household like growing up in Milwaukee uh, Milwaukee, uh, my, my uh, childhood. Listen to the mic for me a little yeah, bit more, my yeah, bad. Yeah, my childhood here in Milwaukee, it was kind of it was kind of spent. Uh, I don't know if you watched the documentary. My mama went crazy when I was 12, so that was right around when I uh, moved to Milwaukee. Cuckoo Cow ain't no name that we just made up because I could rap. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I had a... Um, you know, in, in my fa in my family, we had a lot of uh, mental... Uh, mental, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, um, uh, mental uh, diseases within mental health, within yeah. yeah mental health problems within the family, so uh, you know what I'm saying. I came here. I went to Webster uh, Webster Middle School. Then I went to Vincent High School. Got kicked up out of there, and then the streets hit. And, and there it is, man. <laughs> yeah. You know, just try to you know grow up in the city and try to you know you take to the streets and try to grow up and be a man and stuff like that. Right. Now you know you as the artist and all that, man, because you you definitely been putting down records and doing your thing. Who is Coco as a person? I'm good people. Anybody to tell you I take the shirt off my back, man. You know what I'm saying? I ain't never did no robbing, no stealing. I did a little cheating out in my life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah. no, nah, all around, uh, I'm a good person, man. You know what I'm saying? I just, you know what I'm saying? The streets, when I talk about the projects, man, it's just our people. You know what I'm saying? Right. Real talk. Now, um, you, you give me that vibe, too, man. You got a genuine and kind heart, bro. Um, it don't be too many people like here, out here like that no more, man. Um. You know, you grew up in a different time and stuff like that, man. And um, what, let me ask you, like, what or who inspired you to even get into the music? Well, when I was young, man, I was my I was staying in Germany, man. I always liked the music, man. I used to make cassette tapes for people. And uh, I always, you know what I'm saying, it's 45 minutes, one side, 90 minute cassette, 45, 45. And I used to just go to the record stores, man, and, and look at the Sugar Hill covers. And uh, I used to see black people on covers, man. I just beg, you know what I'm saying, my brother or my mother to buy me, you know, records, man. And, and I used to just make cassette tapes, man. But I always loved the music, man. That's dope, man. Um, that's crazy how we all got that start, you know what I'm saying? It's usually start with like, you know, another type of like different like genre of music other than what you get into and um, making mixtapes and stuff. I remember those days, dubbing tapes, dubbing CDs right. and making mixtapes for people and stuff right, like that. Right, right. And then you want to take around, you know, you, you grow a passion for it for yourself. So For sure. Yeah, that's dope, man. Um, Now, in my projects... um. Were you signed before or after that song? So actually, I did a. Uh, I first nobody knew this. I really was first. The first deal I signed was with the DRE. 
mm. uh, from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Shout out D.I.E. Shout out D.I.E. Um, and then after that, I had did an album with uh, my guys, uh, 88 Keys. I don't know if you're familiar. He was uh, was signed uh, with Rap A Lot, with a G to a key. But we all was a group at once called Stone Cold. And uh, it was like seven of us, man. Um, you know what I'm saying? My guy Seven just started me rapping, man. And uh, we did the first album. It was called Game. And then uh, my guys went to the Fed joint. They introduced me to Steve-O from Infinite Recordings. Mm -hmm. Steve-O introduced me to 4-5, Ralph and Smalls, Infinite 4-5. And I actually signed to deal with them, and they did a 360 with Tommy Boy Records. Yeah, you shout know what out to that. Yep, that was in 2001 when we did the uh, my projects, where I first went national. Man, what was those times like, you know, you know, just being in that era and just, you know, blowing up around that time, creating, uh, let's just talk about, let's talk about creating in my projects. How did that, come, how did that come about? Actually, it happened, uh, I had did, a, uh, my second album was called Walking Dead, mm -hmm. and I had did songs with uh, Mac-10, uh, Spice One, uh, uh, The Outlaws. Uh, I did a track with E-40, but it, it, it wasn't on the album. But anyway, uh that album, uh, we was going to do that beat came up. It was supposed to be a remix for the Mac-10 song. And um, I was at Hank House over on 56 in Hadley. And I took a boom box. I took the beat and I, I took it outside, man. And uh, I just uh, wrote verse by verse, man, and did the chorus, man, and, and, and laid it down. And uh, some cats, uh, this dude named Jabari from Jive Records, it flew in. He, he liked it. He took it back and he flew back and forth like two or three times. And and they actually didn't bite, and then actually, you know, Tommy Boy ended up biting on it. Right, man, that was dope, man. Um, that was a whole different era, man, because it was a time where, you know, we living in a time now with TikTok and Instagram. Right. People had to catch flights, and you had to be, you, you obviously was talented enough to have all these different people talking about you, you know what I'm saying? And it's getting to different cities and people cities, flying right. out, man. Let me ask you this, man. Um, Now, when it came to like you know when you got signed and stuff like that and the video drop and everything like how was what, what was what was your life like when this when this all started unfolding for you man i couldn't i couldn't phantom it man i couldn't phantom it man it was like you know from day to night man i was really just really in the streets man battling you know what i'm saying still back and forth man battling the drug and alcohol addiction man i really wasn't aware to really what was going on i mean i was but i wasn't you know what i'm saying business wise i wasn't on it, man, I just was like, you know, like this is forever. This is just how it's supposed to be. I really was just man in the street, and just loved it, the rapping and the, and the music, man. Yeah, and I was gonna ask you that too, cause it's like I was gonna ask you, um, what, 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 and why was the, I mean, why and what was the downfall of Cool Cool Kyle? Yeah, it was, it was basically the streets, man, and drugs and alcohol, man, took me under, man. Yeah. yeah. Now was you doing that like at an early age, or I started around uh, ninety two to be, to be honest, and uh. And then 92, on and off, dog, since 1992, man. I didn't start rapping until 95, so I didn't even know I could rap until 95. Before then, I was DJing with all the DJs in Milwaukee, Reggie Browns and all them. I was doing basement parties and all that, you know what I'm saying? I yeah. used to DJ, DJ Supreme, shout out Supreme. But, uh, yeah, that was my thing, my thing back in the day was... Uh, was uh, DJ man? That's crazy. I, I just learned that man. I didn't know he was DJ. Oh uh, yeah. Well, was you scratching and stuff too? Yes, I was a bad man. I was a bad man on them turntables. Yeah, that's, that's dope. <laughs> and it's man. like riding a bike, man. You get some turntables now, man. I I still can go. I still can yeah, go. That's dope. That's crazy how much DJ ain't even changed. You know what I'm saying? Cause like it ain't the records no more. Like right. it's like you load your um, MP3s up, right. your songs up, right. and just let them play. Right. We was with the 1200s and needles. Yeah. Yep, had to have the expensive needle, make sure the needle didn't jump. Yeah, man. man. <laughs> yep, those were the days, it, man. It was a different era, man. It was a different time. Uh, let me ask you this. Do you have any, like, uh, regrets or anything like that? And it disappeared. No, I really don't, man. I, I'm I'm blessed. I believe in, in God. I'm very spiritual, man. I believe everything that happened happened for a reason, man. Yeah. I just I trust his will. I, I trust, you know what I'm saying, his path, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. I can I can understand that for sure. Um, 
I, I want to just say, man, you did like I'm saying. I got to give you your flowers, bro, because that's love, man. You was a, a dope artist, still dope to this day, man. You and Baby Drew, man, like y'all really gave them meals something to be proud of for real. Like you know, what is your relationship like with Baby Drew? And like I remember y'all had that that project and that song, you know, what I'm saying that we still listen to to this day. Right. Yep. That's my man. Dog. We've been recording lately. Uh, we got a lot of stuff that we've been doing, man. We just uh trying to work the right angle right now. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's my man. I call him my little big brother man love him to death yeah man I mean I love him to life I love him to life <laughs> love him to life man gotta have a new turn with it man that song right there you don't wanna see it do you punk hey that song classic man <laughs> classic man. top five for sure to come out of Milwaukee for sure that's man love. Like, that's love how did y'all link up and even start working on the project we first like started that? working Drew had actually got in touch with me first man it was like uh, he from the east side I was from the north side mm-hmm. And we had a lot of people feuding in the street about who was colder, you know what I'm saying? And, and Drew got in touch with me like, man, let's shut all this shit down, man, and, and let's just come together and do an album, man. And we did their first album, Cocaine and Cowboys 1. And it's been up ever since, man. Y'all, man, y'all gave the city something to be proud of, man, for sure. That's love. Yeah. So, you know, it's been a it's been a while since y'all like, you know, you and you, I mean y'all still do music, but when y'all 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 time was like reigning kings and stuff like that. How do you feel about the Milwaukee music scene now? You know, it's twenty twenty four versus when you did it. How do you feel about the scene now? Man, it's a lot of young talent out here right now, man. I just left the studio, my guy Blackout Entertainment, man. You got Party at Four, man, you got H one the hook, man, you got Chicken doing his thing, man. You got Looney Baby, man, Guapo. Chapo man it's a lot of young talent out here a a lot of young talent in Milwaukee I respect it all man it's a different era man and and music is music you know what I'm saying now have you got any songs with some of these artists and stuff like that you just named uh uh, uh, yeah, 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 yes, I do. Yeah. Let me ask you this: Like, um, is there, and this could be uh, mainstream or locally, like, is there any artist that you ever thought, like, man, me and him, make, or me and him, or me and her, make some dope music? I love to do a song with Ti. Man, that'll be dope. <laughs> that'll be dope, dog. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And um, just listening to the names you worked with back in the day and stuff like that, bro. Just to have like. Uh, artists from here like you know because the city man we take pride in our city man and right. um anytime something go on with milwaukee we all happy about it. that's one thing i love about the city like we we cheer each other on and we happy right. you know so we take pride in our city and i don't like saying we even a small city no more because i feel like we we one of them ones now you know what i'm saying right, right. we taking over tiktok we got the social media we got the light looking at us and stuff like that right uh, let me ask you this is there anybody like for like artists now like um, do you have any favorite artists that you like listening to? I can't say they all. I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to point out no one artist. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. it's so many different flavors, man. And like I said, I'm an all around. I just love music. You know what I'm saying? I just like good music, man. You know what I'm saying? You can come out with a cold country western song if it's good. If it sound good, it sound good. If it's appealing to the ear, that's what it do. Yeah, and, and that's that sounds just like me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I like anything that sounds good. You know, right. so it don't matter about the genre. Right. Because music is music, and it does the same thing. And it makes you feel good, you know, and it just like, you know, make you want to get up and move and stuff like that. Right, right, right. Now, um, let me ask you, um, do you have any favorite artists like like growing up wise? Like, you know how we have the when Biggie I, Pox. When, when I was growing up, of course, Tupac, Biggie, man. I think uh, I was in the era, shout out Kid Crab and Strict Love, you know what I'm saying? I grew up uh, around them when they was rapping before I could rap, I was DJing. But Kid Crab reminded me of what artists I love was LL Cool J, man. Yeah, <laughs> LL Cool J, man. Yeah. Shout out to him, man. Yeah. You know, it's crazy because there's a lot of rappers now. Like, like, was it this many, like, rappers when you was doing it and coming up or it was it was but it just like wasn't it didn't look like think yeah i think the game has got a little bit more saturated right now you know what i'm saying just everybody and their mama is rapping right now but it's room for everybody you know what i'm saying it's a market for everything man most it's a market out here for it you know it's good to see you still doing music are, are you considering a comeback or are you just doing music because you love yeah, it yeah i mean yeah i'm trying to get into man uh i'm shooting another documentary right now and uh the album is the same as the documentary is called the recovery and i'm, I'm hoping to try and uh, i'm pitching somebody right now trying to shoot my projects the movie you know what i'm saying yeah. so that's one uh-huh. of my goals man that's one of my goals hey, that'll be dope to hear that you know see that movie right. man, unfold like a biopic 
Huh? Like a biopic? Yeah. Oh, yeah, man, that'll yeah, be dope, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, you got to speak into existence, man. Right, like, it indeed, definitely, can, indeed. It definitely can work, you know indeed, what I'm saying? Indeed. Let me ask you, is it anything, like, you know, during your time when you was doing music and you was with Tommy Boy and stuff like that, you know, a lot of artists have their stories of whether it's, like, you know, memories and uh, things they seen or experienced in Hollywood. Do you have any stories? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, man, the, the West Coast, man, shows so much love. Your Two Shorts, E-40, Spice Ones, mm -hmm. uh, DJ Extra Large. I actually did a, a 27 City tour in 30 days over in Germany, man. That was a, a real experience right there, man. The Spice One DJ came out there with me, man, and did the tour with me, man. It was a, an experience, man. In Germany? Yeah, in Germany, yeah. Now, let me ask you, like, what's the difference from doing a show or touring overseas as it is in the States? It's, it seems like, uh, like, uh, I don't want to say, it seems like it's more support overseas. It, was, it, it, it seems like it's more support, man. All the shows, out the 27, 27 shows, man, in 30 days, man, every last show was jam-packed. I wasn't a headliner. I was actually opening up for a big artist over there. I can't even remember his name right now. Mm -hmm. But, uh, it, all the shows was jam packed, man, and uh, man, it was it was a ball, man. We we had the tour buses, man, and we went from from city to city, man, doing shows night after night after night, man. It was a real, a, a, a real nice experience. Yeah, it seems like too, like when you overseas or people overseas, they they pick up on the music later. Yeah, a little later. Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. and it's like you know, it's like they just rocking out with you. And they like cling it's first to time. it too. Yeah, they cling to that to to our music over here. They really cling to it. What's What's your favorite place to um, perform? Uh, I, well, I did a, a big performance. That I can remember back in the day. It was in uh, Indianapolis, man, and uh, it was big. Dog, it was just so many people. Dog, I couldn't believe it. You know, what I'm saying the first time seeing all them people to come out support me, man, was yeah. a trip. Yeah. Now, during that time and everything, like you said, you you were Tommy Boy and you're in my projects, video on BT, MTV and all that. Like, where, when you're doing shows and you're getting booked, like, were you, like, nervous around this time? Or, like, what is your feeling? Are you excited yeah, or nervous? Yeah, I'm just nervous now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I used to just stay with that drinking and stuff. I used to keep me a bottle, and it kind of kind of blocked out everything, man. But, yeah. you know, I, I never really was the type to like the forefront. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. once once – once my music got out there like that, I had to be in the forefront. So I just grabbed me a bottle, take a couple of squigs, and yep. like my eyes was closed and just do my thing. You know yep. what I'm saying? <laughs> and that's how it goes. Like, you know, you get you a little bit of that bottle, get that liquid courage and stuff. Right. Because me, myself, like, I, I don't like to be in the forefront either right. around a lot of, in front of all those crowd of people. It's like, right. Damn. Right. You know what I'm right. saying? Right. So right. That's like, me. That's me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah damn. I, I had to learn to deal with it, though. I had to learn to deal with it. Right. Um, is there any artists like you know like if, if, if like you know younger generation and new artists and stuff like that? What advice would you give them? Man, the main thing is is something that I didn't do. Man, is you got to this business. You know what I'm saying? Once you get that good record, man, you could copyright right from your fingertips. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Put your stuff on Spotify, Distro Kid. I'm quite sure they all know about that. But the main thing is business, man. We didn't have all this uh, internet stuff when I was when I came man. out. But uh, everything is at your fingertips, man. All you need is the internet, man, and, and fingers, man. And you know what I'm saying? All you got to do, you can Google anything and get information on how to do whatever. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, yeah, the main thing is, is business, man. That way, you know what I'm saying? Uh, anything that comes along, man, uh, you, you on top of your stuff. I mean, right after you make a record, man, you know what I'm saying? You copyright it, man, mm -hmm. and, you know, be on your business. Because somebody steal your song or, or uh, anything man. nowadays, man, especially uh, with this Internet game. Man. Right. And it's crazy that you mentioned that. I don't know if you heard recently, not like like not too long ago, there was a lot of artists from here that got their music stolen from, like, two producers. Did you hear about that? No, I didn't. Man, that's crazy. Like, I didn't know, like, you know, that's why it's important, like you're saying, like to have your music intact. Like, cause apparently, I don't know if it's true, but it looking like it was true. Like, right. that these producers was going in, like all the people who they was working with, they knew they didn't have their stuff copyrighted, so they put their name Dang down. Down, yeah. Man, that's a shady game, man. Yep, shady game, man. Like, like, did you? What, let me ask you this: Like, what was the pros and cons of being an artist? Like, period. I mean, I don't know if it's like just just from your time. Well, 
I was traveling the city. I seen so much stuff. I was traveling, man. I was doing for like six, seven months straight, man. Three to four shows a week, man. Mm. And uh, I traveled. I seen a lot of stuff. Hawaii, you know what I'm saying? I, I mean, I met a lot of, you know what I'm saying, famous people. The kinds of it is... Um, it's not as sweet as it look. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It is work, man. I barely, the only time I had, you know what I'm saying, rest or peace was really using the bathroom. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. uh, it's, it's, I could just imagine like a, how Little Wayne or, or, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. All the work that they have to put in, man, it's, it's really tiresome. So it's not all just peaches and cream, man, because I know at my small level, you know what I'm saying? It, it was, it was work, man. It was work for right. real. Did you have, like by you experiencing that? Did you have times where it was like, man, damn, this too much? Like, yeah, you know oh yeah, I felt like that a lot, man. I used to come back to Milwaukee and disappear. Yeah, be looking for me, man. Yeah. It, it was rough because it was it was it was a non it was a non going thing. But then you got good people and great the great people. You know what I'm saying? It's the ones who uh, stick stick it out, man, and rough it out, man. Right. And it's like, because I know, I, I believe uh, you were saying, like, you missed a couple shows and stuff yeah, like that, yeah, missed promo. Yeah. Like, was that just like... That was me running the streets with that drug and alcohol, man. Yeah. I missed two shows, one in Atlanta and one in Phoenix, man. Two big shows, man. Mm. Now, do you think, like, yo, you would have had a way bigger career if it wasn't for that? Most definitely. Between that and also the deal we had, because I kind of backed out. It wasn't just the drugs and alcohol. I was trying to, because I was signed with Infinite, and we was in disagreement, and Tommy Boy was the third party, but they he couldn't come in between. You know what I'm saying? That was a yeah. conflict of interest, and I was trying to get him to buy me out. He wouldn't buy me out. They had blew me up, and so I left them both alone, and I just hit the road and, and got the money. I stopped doing promo, which if I knew now, you know, promo was the best thing for me, even though it was free. Right. It was, you know, them radio stations was, you know what I'm saying, playing yeah. that song over and yeah, over again. Like having to get up and go to them radio stations right, and right. do the interviews. Right. Man, it's definitely, you know, it seemed like it's a lot of work, bro. Like, And I think a lot of people, like, see like what they see on TV and be like oh man that's what I want to go after I want the money but it ain't all about the money it's the work it's the lifestyle it's like you know it, it, it depending on the person it can drive you crazy you know? yeah 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 it's hectic it, it really is Man, and you like your song in my project. You have more. You have more music and more body of work, of course. But that in my project songs is legendary and iconic, to the point it's still being sampled today and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. I How just did a show with that? Des Dior. Like that song has done got me in so many door uh, mm -hmm. doors, man. Uh, Des Dior just sampled it, man. So we getting publishing off of that, man, which is a good thing. So if y'all hear that song with Skiller Baby and Des Dior, pump it up, y'all. Yeah, pump <laughs> right. it up. Play it. Play it. Play it. Uh, we did a show January 20th. She came here in Milwaukee. We did a show together. She just now putting together a tour. And I'm going to, uh, you know, hit some of them spots with her. You know what I'm saying? Get out here and just get a little exposure. You know what I'm right. saying? Now, um, was it a hard, hard trying to get them to, like, you know, do the paperwork and stuff like that? Was they giving you a hard time or it just... As far as who, like you know, getting your your money that you gotta get out of your stuff, you know. Oh uh, so yeah, them like that's uh, oh no, by them sampling, they took it. They took it. They didn't ask. They oh, didn't ask for it. But, it. but it's already it's already bitten. It's like you go to pick and save and boop, and you slide that yeah. food across <laughs> the thing. They ain't that, they, there's no way around it. They gotta pay. You oh, know man. what I'm saying? That's yeah. publishing. Yeah. And it's crazy because like they got Skiller Baby and her on it, bro. That, that's that's gonna revive that just by them sampling that and it's being a big song now right they got people going to your work and see where the original came from exactly exactly so, and so, i actually did a remix to the remix so yeah. you know what i mean yeah man that's dope man shout out to you man um it, you just you definitely be doing your thing with that man and um yeah i'm on a plug too i just came yeah. back from vegas i did a, a podcast also with my guy he's originally from milwaukee man uh, it's called uh, In the Laboratory with Plies, man. Y'all check it out. I did a, a hour interview with him, man. Y'all check it out, man. Mm -hmm. Now, let me ask you, man. I got two more questions for Indeed. you. Um, how, like, after, like, today, like, how is Cuckoo Kyle? Like, how you holding up? Uh, right now, I'm kind of focused on family, man. My, my oldest son, Kyle Jr., just got out of jail last week, Monday, man. He has mental issues right now. I'm trying to get him squared away. His mother's actually in a nursing home. Her birthday is actually tomorrow. I'm kind of dealing with uh, family issues right now, you know what I mean? I got yeah. two kids, 19 and 16, and, and then my soulmate, you know, she's got multiple sclerosis in a, in a nursing home right now. So. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, yeah. 
Man, that's family first, brother. Oh, yeah, um, indeed, indeed. You know what I'm saying? I think it's just a blessing, bro, like, you know, for y'all to be around, having our legends around, you know what I'm saying? And you to be up here alive and well and, you know, you still doing music and going strong and you taking care of your family, you know, that's that's a blessing. And we take that for granted sometimes because we don't know if we're going to return home, but we do. And we are returning home, man. So right. uh, let me ask you this final question, man. Like, um, what's next for Cuckoo Cow? Like I said, hopefully this movie, we're going to speak it into existence, man. My projects, the movie, man, telling the story from from the beginning uh, uh, to the end, man. Otherwise, man, y'all look for uh, this documentary called The Recovery and and the album called The Recovery, man. Yeah, most definitely. Um, Also, I like to touch, like, I like how you, uh, you know, you're opening up about your mental health and stuff like that because I know back then, like, it wasn't, people wasn't big on it and they they didn't take it serious. Right, right, right. And now, we in the times where we have that 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 plat the platforms and the people taking it serious and things like that. What do you feel about that? Like, do you feel like it's 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 definitely good to get that shine? Yes, up? yes, this is definitely good, man. I used to be embarrassed to talk about it, man. You know what I'm saying with my mother. You know what I'm saying now. My son, my granddaddy, my sister, they all. You know what I'm saying. May they rest in peace, my mother and sister and granddaddy. But. Uh, yeah, man, to have this platform and speak on it, man, it, it's real, man. It, it's, it's Mental health is real. It's yeah, real. Most yeah. definitely. Man, well, y'all know what it is, man. Cuckoo Cow, legendary Cuckoo Cow, man, here on the rap draft, man. We here on the rap draft, baby. Yeah. Cuckoo. Yeah, man. Like I said, I appreciate you for being here and coming on the show, man. That means a lot to me, brother, because, um, like I said, I grew up watching you, you know what I'm saying? You definitely have been walking on your on your back. You and Baby Drew, and y'all inspired the people who's doing music today. And, you know, y'all y'all ran so we could walk, you know, however, however the saying goes. You. But I <laughs> wanted to give you your flowers and say thank you, brother. That's love, man. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, and let the people know where they can find you at. Man, you can find me at Cuckoo Cow B on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. It's all Cuckoo Cow with a B. Cuckoo Cow B, uh, uh, Instagram and Facebook, man. It's about four different pages on, on, on Cuckoo Cow or Cuckoo Cow B on, on Facebook, man. Y'all check me out. Hit me up for them features. It's in me. It yeah. ain't on me. Cuckoo That's Cow, right. man. With the rap draft right here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Yeah, y'all know what it is, man. Tap in, man. Rick Taylor, rap draft, Cuckoo Cow, we out.